Hi folks, Sandy Hovetter here of Data Designs Publishing, and for today's tips I'm going to show you four different ways to underline text. I will be demonstrating in InDesign 5.5, but the, these methods are available in InDesign 3, 4, 5, 5.5, uh, CS6 and the Creative Cloud. So whatever version you've got, you can do what I'm about to demonstrate. So let's go to InDesign. I have a file open here and you can see that I've written our company name four times. It says Data Designs Publishing. Over here, if you can see, uh, those are my little reminder notes. Those are the four different ways we're going to apply an underline. In the so the first method I've called a simple underline. I'm going to do that by selecting the text, which I did with a triple click, and come up here to the control plant panel and click on the underline symbol. When I uh, deselect the text, you can see that the, the title Data Designs Publishing is underlined. Pretty easy. The problem is you don't have a lot of flexibility with it, so I want to show you some other things. The next thing someone is inclined to do if they want to do something a little fancier is to come over and grab the line tool and draw a line under the text. I'm holding down the shift key while I draw so that the line remains straight. At that point, you've got a line under the text. Let's say you wanted it to be a thick and thin line. We can come up and change it to four points, which is a pretty good size for that. And we've got a line. Now I can take that line. Let me change the color so that uh, it's pretty obvious. Got a red line under there. I can select that and I can move it up. I'm doing this by using the arrow keys. I can move it down, I can move it to the right or the left. Obviously I can take the end and I can make it as long as I want. So you have a lot of flexibility about how you can position the, the line under the text. The problem with this is that now you've got two objects and if you ever move the text block, for whatever reason, the line doesn't move with it unless you group them together and then that's, that can create some other issues. So this works sometimes. It's not usually the best solution. So let's go back to our text tool and I'm going to do what I've called an advanced underline. So I'm clicking on the text again, a triple click to select it all. We said the simple underline was just use the underline symbol in the control panel. But if I want some more advanced options, I want to go to the character uh, dialog box. Now I keep that over here docked on the side panel, but if you don't keep it there, you can go to the type menu, and down here it says character or control T. Click on character, and that opens that dialog box. Now to get to the underline, I'm going to right, I'm going to left click on this little down arrow. That's the menu for this this dialog box. And you can see that underline is already checked because I've applied an underline to it. But if you go to underline options and click, let me move it out of the way, you get another dialog box. And here we can change a number of things. First of all, we can change the weight. So let's do that. We can change the offset. The off offset is how much below the text that underline will appear. Right now it's 3.6 points. Let's uh, Let's make it six. And a little bit harder to see, but when I deselect the text, you'll be able to see the movement. You also could change the color. Let's make this one green just to make it more visible. And in here, we can change the type of the line. So we can get that thick, thin line that we used uh, in the previous example. Let's go ahead and click OK and deselect the text and you see that we have underlined the word Data Designs Publishing with a, a, a fancier line than in the first one and that was just doing the underline tool, using the underline tool. Let's say that we want to extend the line a little beyond the text like we did in the second example with the drawn line. I'm going to put my cursor down here in this fourth uh, Data Designs Publishing, and we will do, we'll create a line a fourth way. And we'll do that by using what's called a paragraph rule. You're going to get to that. 
from the parallel the paragraph uh, menu which I always have docked on the side of my screen but if you don't you can come up to the type menu and you'll see that it's the fourth from the top ours is already checked because I have the menu open now when I come over here to it again remember you have to make sure that your cursor is in the paragraph I'm going to click on the downward triangle to open the menu and down here near the bottom it says paragraph rules. When I click on that it opens a dialog box. The first uh, options in here are whether or not I want a rule line above or a rule line below. We're going to do a rule line below but you can use rule line above often to create a break in, uh, before a headline or a paragraph. It can be a good design element. But we're going to do rule line above, I'm sorry, rule line below. We're going to turn it on, and as soon as we turn it on, a couple of things happen. All of these uh, different options became available, and we're going to go through those. But if you look down at the screen, you'll see that it has automatically placed uh, a line all the way across, uh, right at really the footer of my text. So let's go through these options. We're going to make it like the other lines. We're going to make it four points. Let's uh, pick a different text color. Let's go with blue. Right now I just have a four point rule. We're going to change the type. We're going to go with that thick and thin rule again. If I wanted a tint of that color, like just instead of 100% of it, just wanted 20 or 30% of it, I could change that here. I'm not going to do that. This gap color that applies to the color between the two lines because I have a thick line and then a thin line. I could, I'll just do this to show you, uh, let's make it red so that it stands out. And you can see down here that I've got a thick blue line, the gap between the two lines is red, and then a thin blue line. I am going to change that gap to no color. And then I get to decide how wide I want the text to be. If I select column, it's gone the full width of my, my document because I have a single column document. If I selected text, now my line is only as long as my text. So I'm going to take it back to column and uh, offset, I am going to offset this by six points. Oops, not 66, just six. There you go. That's probably a bit much. Let's take it back to four. That looks a bit better. And now I've got my line. Something else I can do with this though is maybe I don't want that line to go all the way to the edge of the page uh, on the right. Uh, let's say I want to indent it by three pikas. See what that does for us. There you go. And I've not, you can see here that it ends a bit before the margin. I'm going to make that a bit more, make it six, and there we go. If I didn't want it to start at the left edge of my text, I could, I'll make it the same six points from the left, although now that'll be too much. We'll go three points. There you go. So if you've got, uh, you can use this as a design element as well. If you want your headlines to be underlined all the time um, or with lines that extend beyond the text or uh, begin partial, you know, at the, after the first letter or two, you can set your left and right indents. I'm going to put them back to zeros because I want them uh, want the line to begin at the left and to go all the way across the page. Notice the whole time I've been doing this I've had preview check that's allowed us to see the results of uh, the changes we were making as we were making them. Say OK and I now have a ruling line below uh, the, the company name Data Designs Publishing. So those are four different ways each have their own uses. Uh, a simple underline a drawn line, which I think you should generally use the least, uh, an advanced underline, or when you want to really do some different things, the paragraph rule below. There's always more than one way to skin a cat, as my mom would say. Uh, she wasn't talking about InDesign, but she could have been. Always many ways to accomplish the same thing. Hope this has been helpful. This is Sandy Hovatter of Data Designs Publishing. 
feel free to give us a call or send us an email if you've got questions. You can also check out our website where we've got some tips and tricks. Have a great day.